Hello, welcome to Lockdown Anatomy. I'm Professor Alice Roberts. I'm a clinical anatomist and these videos are all about the anatomy of the human body and we're doing it part by part, little bite-sized chunks. We've worked our way all the way down the upper limb and now we've got as far as the hand, which is an incredible intricate piece of machinery so that's what we're going to look at now and once again I'm using the fantastic 3D4 medical complete anatomy app. The first question then is how well do you know the back of your own hand? A question we often ask ourselves well we'll leave the back for a while let's look at the palm of your hand to begin with here are the flexion creases across the palm and of course on your fingertips you've got fingerprints you've got these papillary ridges. Underneath your palm, if you were to strip away the skin and the fat there, you'd find that there is a thick layer of connective tissue. It's called the palmar aponeurosis. And this palmar aponeurosis is connected to one of the tendons that we saw in the forearm in a previous video, this one, palmaris longus. So that's where that tendon's going. It's passing into the palm and it helps to improve grip. And in turquoise, I've just picked out that tendon at the wrist, palmaris longus, and you can see the way that that's flowing into the palm, and then it has longitudinal fibers which continue up towards the fingers and actually insert into the superficial transverse metacarpal ligament, and then there are transverse fibers joining up between those longitudinal strips. There's another little muscle, palmaris brevis, in the heel of your hand and that wrinkles the skin at the bottom of your hand and again helps to improve your grip. So now we're going to strip away these superficial anatomical structures in the palm of the hand including palmaris brevis and palmaris longus and I want you to focus down at the base of the hand and what we can see here is a fibrous band stretching across the tendons that are passing into the hand itself. It's called the flexor retinaculum. And this is where it is in your hand. So it bridges across between the carpal bones at the wrist here. And in fact, these tendons at your wrist go underneath it. When you flex your fingers, what, what those tendons want to do is bowstring out like this. And the flexor retinaculum pins them in, keeps them in place, retains them. Here it is isolated, just the flexor retinaculum and the bones of the wrist and the metacarpals. And you can see the way that fibrous band attaches at either side and then there's a gap underneath it where the tendons pass through in their synovial flexor sheaths. So let's take away some of the muscles around the thumb and the little finger and then we can see the attachments of the flexor retinaculum I'll take away that synovial sheath as well so we can see the tendons in more detail but what that sheath does of course is keep them running smoothly through this narrow space. And now we can see all those long flexor tendons that have come from muscle bellies in the forearm and are passing all the way down to the fingers and we can see them running through the carpal tunnel that is created by the flexor retinaculum and the bones it attaches to. So which bones does it attach to? Well, they're the ones at the corners of the wrist, the pisiform bone, the hook of the hamate, the trapezium, and the scaphoid tubercle there. You should be able to feel some of those, particularly the pisiform bone and the scaphoid tubercle, quite easily in your own wrist. And just look at the way the tendons are passing through there. It's quite a snug fit, actually, for those tendons. And as well as the tendons, there's an important nerve that passes underneath the flexor retinaculum, the median nerve. So you might have heard of carpal tunnel syndrome. This is where there's some kind of swelling around those tendons, which might be to do with arthritis or pregnancy or many other causes. And what happens is that the median nerve becomes compressed in that tunnel. So you can see that the median nerve passes through underneath the flexor retinaculum and the ulnar nerve passes over the top. I'm now cutting away all these structures as you can and complete anatomy to have a look at that cross section. The cut tendons are shown in a slightly meaty colour here. If I was cutting those in the dissectionary, they'd, they'd actually be white all the way through. They're very collagenous. They're full of that fibrous protein collagen. So let's label these things up. There's a the flexor retinaculum and underneath it you've got a bunch of four tendons stacked two above two. They're the flexor digitorum superficialis tendons and then lying side by side deep to the 
FDS tendons are the flexor digitorum profundus tendons, the, the deeper set of long digital flexor tendons. And there's flexor pollicis, longest FPL, over on the thumb side of the hand, over on the radial side, and then flexor carpi radialis, which passes through its own little tunnel, separate from the carpal tunnel itself. And then finally, we mustn't forget to label the median nerve sitting above the flexor tendons in that carpal tunnel. Here's a different view, a drawing that I made of these structures at the wrist, and you can see the median nerve disappearing into the carpal tunnel, the ulnar nerve passing over the top of it. And all these anatomy drawings I've made are over on my Flickr account, and you can freely download them and print them out if that's helpful. And then here's a bit of living anatomy. This is where my median nerve is, lying just on the ulnar or medial side of flexor carpi radialis tendon at the wrist. If it gets compressed, you can get tingling in the lateral, the radial three and a half fingers, and sometimes wasting of those thumb muscles as well. So we've talked a lot about these long flexor tendons passing underneath the flexor retinaculum, but let's just recap where they actually go in the hand. Here are these long digital flexor tendons, they're contained together within a synovial sheath, and that package is then contained within a fibrous sheath. That fibrous sheath has transverse elements to it which form little rings or annular pulleys and then cross-like or cruciform pulleys over each of the joints. So these again are retinacular, they help to retain the tendons close to the bone and stop bowstringing happening. So once again we can unpackage that anatomy, stripping away that fibrous flexor sheath and we see the synovial sheath that keeps those tendons running smoothly inside it and now we can see the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis. The superficial tendon splits into two slips which insert into the middle phalanx of the finger, there and there. FDP, the deep digital flexor tendon, just continues all the way to insert onto that terminal phalanx. FDS is going to flex the proximal interphalangeal joint, FDP is going to flex the distal interphalangeal joint, but remember they're also going to flex all the joints on the way to their insertions as well. These tendons come from muscle bellies elsewhere, they are so-called extrinsic muscles of the hand. Now let's focus on some intrinsic hand muscles. Here's the thena eminence, there's lots of little thumb muscles in there, and the hypothena eminence has got a set of muscles in it as well. Let's start by looking at the muscles of the thumb. The bulk of the thena eminence is made up of abductor pollicis brevis and flexor pollicis brevis. Brevis means short or brief. Both of these muscles insert onto the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb, flexor pollicis brevis via the radial sesamoid, that tiny bone. Here's abductor pollicis brevis and what it does. So it moves the thumb away from the hand. If we look at the hand in this view, abductor pollicis brevis moves the thumb up towards the ceiling if your palm is facing upwards. In this view there's abduction again, abductor pollicis brevis moving the thumb away from the fingers. So flexion works at 90 degrees to that movement. Flexor pollicis brevis is going to operate this joint, the metacarpophalangeal joint, and it's going to bring the thumb into flexion across the palm. So flexor pollicis brevis just works on that MCP joint and then flexor pollicis longus, that long tendon that comes in from the forearm, is going to operate on the interphalangeal joint of the thumb, bringing the thumb into flexion across the palm. Here are those two muscles. You can see flexor pollicis brevis in the hand, flexor pollicis longus down in the forearm. We'll now take away those superficial muscles in the thena eminence and we can see some muscles underneath. We can see opponens pollicis. Now that is attaching from the trapezium down in the wrist and the flexor retinaculum up to the first metacarpal, the metacarpal of the thumb. We can also see adductor pollicis and it's got two heads, a transverse head and an oblique head, and they converge on the proximal phalanx inserting via the ulnar sesamoid bone onto that proximal phalanx. Opponens pollicis attaches here on the outside of the first metacarpal. So it's going to bring that metacarpal right across in front of the hand like this. It's actually operating the carpometacarpal joint down here and moving that whole metacarpal across in the movement that is called opposition. And you can also bring your little finger into opposition as well and that means you can touch the tip of the thumb and the little finger together. 
So there are Oppenend's Polysys and Oppenend's Digity Minimi on the little finger working together to bring the tip of the thumb and the little finger into opposition. Using those muscles together, it narrows the whole shape of the hand as though you could then use it to put a narrow bangle over your hand. Now let's have a look at adductor polysis. There it is glowing and pulling the thumb towards the palm of the hand and the fingers. Abduction moves your thumb away from the hand like that. Adduction pulls the thumb back down towards the palm of the hand and the fingers. The important thing to remember about the way that the thumb moves is that it's at 90 degrees to the plane of movement of the fingers. So that's flexion of the fingers. Flexion of the thumb happens across the palm like that. Here's abduction of the fingers. They spread out. And abduction of the thumb moves the thumb away and up to the ceiling if your palm's facing upwards. Right, that's enough of the Thena eminence. Let's turn our attention to the hypothena eminence and a bunch of muscles that seem quite familiar in their names. Abductor digiti minimi, first of all. And then underneath that, we find flexor digiti minimi. And then if we strip that one away, we find an opponens digiti minimi. So you've essentially got a very similar suite of muscles in the little finger. They're just a lot smaller than the ones in the thumb. Now we're going to strip away all of the muscles of the hypothena and thena eminence and look at some of the deeper muscles that lie within the palm of the hand. First of all, we'll look at a set of skinny little muscles called lumbricals because they look a little bit like worms. And these muscles unusually connect from one tendon to another. So they start out from the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus and then they loop around the radial side of each finger to insert on the extensor tendon or expansion on the back of the finger. So this is what they do. They flex the MCP joint and extend the interphalangeal joint. If I tuck my thumb out of the way, I can show you the action of the lumbrical muscles. Now you rarely do that on its own, but they improve the precision grip something like holding a pen, for instance. Now we've stripped away flexor digitorum profundus and the associated lumbricals, and we can see the deepest layer of muscles in the palm of the hand. These are the interossi. They lie between the bones, between the metacarpal bones, and they attach up to the proximal phalanges. The ones that you can see here are the palmar interosseous muscles, and these little muscles are going to contract and bring all of your fingers in together. In other words, they're going to adduct the fingers. So the palmar interossi adduct. Beneath those is another set, the dorsal interossi, and those are going to pull all of those fingers apart and abduct the fingers. So dorsal interossi abduct. Let's have a look at that in a living hand. You can feel the metacarpal bones in the palm of your hand and between them, that's where those interosseous muscles lie. So the dorsal interossi are going to abduct your fingers like that, and the palmar interossi adduct them. Dab pad is a good way of remembering it. Right, we've finished with the anterior surface, with the palmar surface of the hand. So we'll put all those muscles back and then spin around and lastly have a quick look at the back and you'll be very, very grateful to know that there's not as much anatomy here. So there's an extensor retinoculum, again, retaining this time the extensor tendons at the wrist, which are also flowing through synovial sheaths, as you can see there, lighting up in green. And the extensor tendons of the fingers pass into the fingers and then expand out into these extensor hoods or extensor expansions, which have quite extensive attachments on the fingers themselves on the phalanges. Each extensor tendon is going to insert into both the middle and the distal phalanges. So it's kind of doing the job of the two flexor tendons on the other side. You can see those attachments on the middle phalanx and the distal just there. If you stretch your fingers backwards, you can get those tendons to stand up, those extensor tendons, and they run into the fingers attaching to the middle and the distal phalanges. So that extensor tendon is going to extend both the proximal and the distal interphalangeal joints and of course the MCPs and the wrist as well. Well we've covered all the bones and the muscles of the upper limb but there are some bits of anatomy that really we have omitted up until this point and those are the blood vessels and the nerves. So the next video I'll be delving into that, the neurovascular supply 
to the upper limb. Hope to see you there. Please do like, share, comment, tell me what you'd like to see in these videos too and I'll try to make a video for you. Thanks a lot, see you next time.